Zabira Tuhugov versus Elvis Brenner Oliveira. And this guy actually does train with Oliveira, but I am picking Zabira to win this fight. And the reason I'm picking Zabira to win this fight is he's kind of like a grappler with a lot of power on his feet, calculated with his approach. Elvis Brenner Oliveira, he hasn't got too much power in his hands. He's got one KO on his record. He gets a lot of submissions. He likes to counter strike, but he does his best work when he's on the ground. And I think Zabura has to be careful in this fight because I look back to that Lero Murphy fight where he was taking him down in that fight, but he was leaving his chin exposed. And Leron Murphy isn't a guy who gets submissions, but he was getting like a tight guillotine on him. He got some other submission on him. I can't remember what it was. And he got it underneath the neck, but Zabura was able to get out. But against a guy like this, but very good jujitsu, like I said before, he trains with Charles Oliveira at Chute Box. I think he might keep it on the feet for like round one and two, be patient, snap out that jab, maybe catch him and drop him. And then in like the third round, what he might decide to do is mix up a bit of his grappling and like get him towards the corner of the cage and try and land ground and pound. So if I had to make a prediction exactly what's going to happen, I think he might win this fight by either KO in the first round or if it goes past the first round, he'll win by decision. But he has to be careful with where he puts his head because this Elvis Brenner guy can be dangerous off his back. He gets a lot of arm bars and stuff like that submissions off his back not just when he's in controlling positions and Zabira did get a draw with Lee Ron Murphy but I think he won that fight and against again Hakeem Dawudu you could argue he won that fight also so you could say his legit loss actually did come to like Renato Moicano in the UFC and it's not a bad loss to have. Blake Builder versus Shane Young I think this is another obvious one I'm picking Blake Builder to win the fight and believe it or not He's the underdog going into this fight. Shane Young hasn't looked too good in his fights. He looks very average. He's a kickboxer. He fought Alexander Volkanovsky five years ago. He got brutally KO'd by Ludovic Klein. And recently, he lost the decision to Omar Morales. And the problem with that is he hasn't been active. His last fight was one year and nine months ago. Blake Boulder has been active for a long time. I know he's only 7-0 as you might think. But he's got good form. He's in a good mental state. He put a very good performance on the Dana White Contender Series, getting a rear naked choke. And I like the way how he fights. He sets up his takedowns with like strikes. Like maybe he'll throw like a hook feint and then dive in for the takedown. And once he's got you on the ground, it's going to be hard to get up. And he also likes to throw kicks to the body as well. But I don't think he's going to try and keep it on the feet with a guy like Shane Young. Shane Young, when he fought Alexander Volkanovsky, he kept it on the feet. But I don't really think Volkanovsky was trying to get him down. I think he was just trying to do what he usually does by strike, throw the leg kick, clinch, and use that to beat him. And he did beat Shane Young. He did knock him out, but he did beat him by decision. And I do think Blake Builder will win this fight, and I think it will be by decision. Because Shane Young does have a level of jiu-jitsu, but I think Blake Bider will shoot on him first. He'll be on top of him and just try and control him. I don't think he'll get the submission. Although he could, because you look at Blake Builder's submissions, he got an inverted triangle choke, a bit like Jordan Levitt, I believe. An armbar, triangle choke, rear naked choke. We haven't got to see too much of his power yet because he's on the ground trying to look for a submission. But if he can get a submission over him, that would be very impressive. Considering the guy, Shane Young, has never been submitted. And then we have a very underrated fight with Jack Jenkins versus Don Shanice. I'm picking Jack Jenkins to win this fight. A lot of people might say, oh, he's a boring fighter. I don't think he is. You're going to get angry at this comparison, but he gives me vibes of Volkanovski. I know he isn't as good as Volkanovski. Just watch his highlights and watch the way how he fights. He likes to throw those outside calf kicks. He likes to clinch onto you. He's got very good takedown defense. And I think the reason why he kind of fights a bit like Volk is he does train with him, I believe. He might not anymore, but at one point he was. Don Shanice came off a loss to Sadiq Youssef. I know it was a fast guillotine finish, and that's surprising considering the fact that Sadiq Youssef isn't really a jiu-jitsu guy, he's more of a striker. Don Shanice, yeah, he gets a lot of TKOs and KOs, but they're from grappling. And I think because Jack Jenkins has got very good takedown defense, he's going to be able to keep it on the feet, and Don Shanice is going to have to try and strike with him. But Don Shanice isn't just like a can. He doesn't really get knocked out. I believe he's only been knocked out once, but I think Jack Jenkins will win the fight via decision like he'll piece him up with the leg kicks he'll outstrike him will use his jab on him and he might even drop him with leg kicks as he's trying to get him for the takedown because if he can attack the legs of Don Shanice 
it will make it harder for him to shoot on Jack Jenkins. Look at Duhoi Choi versus Carl Nelson. Duhoi Choi was attacking the legs of Carl Nelson, which made it harder for him to shoot for takedowns. Yeah, it ended up as a draw, and I'm not going to go into detail about that, but I think Jack Jenkins should be able to get the job done via decision. Then we have a very entertaining fight between Jamie Malarkey versus Francisco Prado. This Francisco Prado guy is only 20 years of age. Jamie Malarkey is 28, and you might think that Jamie Malarkey might win this due to experience. I'm going to pick the underdog in Prado to win the fight. From what I've seen from him, he's got very good kicks, he's got very good footwork. The only thing he needs to like work on is accuracy. He's got a lot of power of his hands. If he connects on you, you might go down. Whereas Jamie Malarkey, a lot of accuracy. Look at that fight with Michael Johnson. The only thing you kind of have to worry with Jamie Malarkey is his chin. Like I think back to that Volkanovski fight when he got knocked out cold. I know that was a while back, but against Michael Johnson he was getting caught as well. Some people would argue that Michael Johnson won round one and round three. It was very close and I'd probably edge it to Michael Johnson. But Jamie Malarkey isn't going to be easy. And I can understand why most of you would probably pick Jamie Malarkey because he's the older guy. This guy's young, very explosive. And when you fight explosively, you can get caught. But Jamie Malarkey's got a low guard, so I think... He'll be able to catch Jamie Malarkey on the chin, even though he's got very good accuracy. If you've got your hands down against a guy like Prado, who comes at you fast, with a lot of power, spinning kicks, high kicks, it's going to be hard to deal with that pressure. And he's young as well. But he's fought four times this year. He's been very active, but he gets a lot of KOs and he gets a lot of submissions. So if he doesn't knock out Jamie Malarkey, maybe he might decide to grapple with him because Malarkey's not really a grappler. Yeah, he's got three submissions, but this guy... Has got more submissions than KOs. He can grapple. He's strong. So I think he can beat him. I can understand why a lot of you would pick probably Jamie Malarkey via decision. Because the guy's young. But look, some of the young fighters do well. Like Rule Roses Jr. for example. He's young. He got the job done. Clayson Rodriguez versus Shannon Ross. I'm picking Clayson Rodriguez. But I wouldn't be surprised if Shannon Ross won this fight. Shannon Ross is a guy who likes to get hold of you. Clinch onto you. Take you down to the ground and land strikes from there. Clayton Rodriguez is like a creative striker on the feet. He can wrestle, kind of, but he's got more of jiu-jitsu and striking. He likes to throw a lot of inside leg kicks whilst mixing up some like high kicks to the head. And add some jumping flying knees into that as well. He had a close fight with CJ Vergara, which I believe he should have won, but it was a split decision and he lost it to CJ Vergara. But it's got good power for a flyweight. And Shannon Ross... He was on the contender series, he lost and it was by a TKO, but I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. That guy who he fought, all of his wins have come by knockouts. So I don't want to call him a glass jaw or anything like that because of that. But in the past, he has been KO'd with a head kick and knowing that makes me think Clayton Rodriguez likes to throw a lot of leg kicks, he likes to throw a lot of high kicks, flying knees. I wouldn't be surprised if he caught him on the chin with a high kick and knocked him out cold. Because usually, when he's going to knock someone out, it's usually a KO finish, not usually a TKO. And that shows a lot, especially at flyweight, where you're lighter, it's hard to get KOs, but he can. And Shannon Ross, he might annoy Rodriguez with his fight style. Like grabbing onto you like he's Tyson Fury, clinching onto you, trying to make you tired. And he could grind out a decision doing that, because both of Rodriguez's losses have been by a decision. And Shannon Ross could do that and hold on to him, get the decision. But my mind is telling me that Clayton Rodriguez will use his striking on the feet and I think he'll outpoint strike him to a decision. Ross might grapple with him, but I don't think he'll score many points from doing it. Because even if he does, remember, Rodriguez has got that threat of jiu-jitsu on the ground. So yeah, I'm picking Rodriguez. Joshua Killabao versus Melsic. I'm going to mess this name up. Bagdasarayan. I'm picking Melsic to win this fight. Joshua Kilalbo does have a good chance, but the reason I'll pick Melsic is Joshua has got fluid boxing. It's very good. He's got a lot of power, but the only thing I worry about him is when he dips his head down low to throw those wild hooks, he could get caught with a head kick. Look at Leon Edwards against Usman. Moves his head to the side, gets caught with a head kick. Just like when Stephen Thompson called it out. I've got a feeling Melsic might be able to KO Joshua Kilalbao. He's only been KO'd once in his career, and it was by Jalen Turner, but this Melsic guy is full of power. He used to fight in K1. He likes to start off fast. 
He likes to grab you in the clinch. He likes to throw loads of knees. He's got a mix of like kickboxing and Muay Thai. He's not really a grappler, but neither is Joshua Kulabao. And I think they're both going to be striking on the feet. Kulabao is definitely faster than Melsic, but I can see Melsic mixing up shots to the body, whereas Joshua, he mainly focuses on the head, trying to get that knockout. I think Melsic, round one, he might lose that. But in round two, after he's worked up the body from throwing like some teep kicks, throwing some outside calf kicks, I think he'll slow Joshua Kulabao down because he's very fast. And if he can take out his gas tank in later rounds, he could catch him with that head kick whilst Joshua Kulabao tries to throw those like wild hooks. And because he would have reduced the speed of Joshua, when he goes to throw the hook, it will be much slower, allowing Melsic more time to land that kick. And I think that's what he's going to do. I think he's going to get a head kick knockout in this fight. Or if he doesn't get a head kick knockout, I think he'll win via decision. Kulabao has got a good chance of winning this fight because he's very fast. But I think Melsic's chin will hold out because I think he'll slow him down. He'll be able to manage the distance well, especially because he's done Muay Thai. Kulabao's got his hands down a lot of the time, a low guard. Low guard, dipping your head down, trying to throw hooks. You are going to be open to these like Muay Thai strikes, like the knees, the hooks... So it's going to be like the boxer versus the Muay Thai fighter. And there's a massive debate about that online, about whether the boxer or the Muay Thai guy is better. And in this scenario, I am picking the Muay Thai fighter to win. Modestus Bukowskis versus Tyson Pedro. I'm picking Tyson Pedro to win this fight. He should win this fight. Modestus was in the UFC a while back. If you can remember, he got his leg snapped by Khalil Runtree with that oblique kick. And like messed up his leg completely. I do think he did beat Michelle only a shirt, but he lost via split decision. And he got KO'd by Jimmy Crew, and that concerns me a lot. I know it was in 2020, but Jimmy Crew is a grappler who likes to use submissions. He got knocked out cold by him. Jimmy Crew doesn't ever get KOs. He gets TKOs, not KOs, on the feet. And he was able to knock him out. But he did get two wins recently in Cage Warriors, Lee Chadwick. Chuck Campbell, but again, these guys aren't the best in this type of promotion. And Modestus don't like to fight grapplers. Tyson Pedro, he can use jiu-jitsu, he can strike on the feet with you, and he has got a granite chin. He's been knocked out before, but you look back to that fight with Khalil Runtree, he got knocked down very early into the fight. He was able to come back and get the rear naked choke. And another guy who he's beaten is Paul Craig. They're very good wins to have on your record, beating Paul Craig and Khalil Runtree. But then you see he loses to a guy like Ilya Latifi. And he lost to Ovin St. Peru, Maurizio Rua, who at that time, they weren't at their prime anymore, but they were able to beat Tyson Pedro. But the thing about Modestus Bukowskis is, I think that leg might be still a bit injured. And we know Tyson Pedro's got a heavy leg kick. Like look at that fight with Isaac Villanueva. He KO'd him with a leg kick. And he knows that... Modestus Bukowskis, his leg might have some like damage from that fight with Khalil Runtree. So he might start chopping it up. And Modestus does a lot of lateral movement circling around the cage. So if Tyson Pedro can't land that straight hand on him, or like land a body kick or anything like that, he might land a leg kick as Modestus is circling around. And then that might like sit him down to the ground and then win. But Modestus has got a counter strike ability where he can catch you on the chin. He's got a lot of power, more KOs than Tyson Pedro. But I think Tyson Pedro will be able to deal with a guy like Modesto, circling around and attack him to the leg, probably drop him with a leg kick and then finish him on the ground or like a submission. Jimmy Crew versus Alonzo Menefield. I'm picking Alonzo Menefield. He's an underdog, but I think he's a good pick for this fight. He's got good Muay Thai, he's full of power, and he can deal with guys with Jiu-Jitsu. Jimmy Crew is a Jiu-Jitsu guy who wants to take you down to the ground and strike with you on there, or look for a submission. Alonzo Menefield's beaten people like Paul Craig, Vinicius Morea, you probably don't remember him, he was a Jiu-Jitsu guy, he dealt with him. Misha Serkinov, he KO'd him. There's a high chance he's going to KO a guy like Jimmy Crew. Because I'm starting to question his chin now, like... He got a doctor stoppage against Anthony Smith. Okay, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. But a lot of his fights end in round one. Jimmy Crute fought Misha Serkinov. He got submitted. Alonzo Menefield KO'd him. I know MMA math don't make sense, but 
I can kind of see why that happened because Misha Serkinov is a jiu-jitsu guy. Jimmy Crute is a jiu-jitsu guy also. So they wanted to go down to the ground and test their jiu-jitsu and he got submitted. Alonzo Menefield looks big. I think he's going to struggle to get him down to the ground. And Menefield will stop the takedowns, keep it on the feet and get a KO. And I think this fight will end in round one. Justin Taffer versus Parker Porter. you got two super heavyweights. And I am going to pick Justin Taffer to beat him. He's younger. A lot of his fights end with KOs. Well, all of them are KOs. Parker Porter. Yeah, he's got KO power. Yes, he can grapple, but all he's going to try and do against Taffer is try and get a body lock, drag him towards the cage, probably not even take him down, cage stall with him, try and strike with him on the cage, and try and get a decision victory. I don't think that will work against a guy like Justin Taffer. Like, you look at that fight with Harry Hunsucker, he has a very good takedown defense. So if he's able to keep it on the feet, and Parker Porter's going to have to try and strike toe-to-toe, -to -toe, with Justin Taffer. I think Taffer will get a knockout on him. But another concern I have is, I know he's got a granite chin, but I'm looking back to the Jared Vandera fight with him where they had a war. Out of all people, it had to be Jared Vandera. Like, Jared Vandera, in my opinion, isn't that good. I don't even think he's in the UFC anymore. And I think the reason he won it is Jared Vandera's quite fast for a heavyweight. He's not good, but he has got some speed about him. But Taffer's very slow, but he's got a lot of power to go with it. And Parker Porter's aging now. And with older guys, they usually get knocked out when they've had long careers. And Parker Porter likes fighting journeymen. That's how he built up a lot of his record. You see he beat people like Josh Parisian. Okay, that's a decent win to have on your record. Chase Sherman, not a good win. Alan Baldo, average win. Not the best either. He got knocked out by John Jones back in the day, but I can't even find the footage for it. And I think Justin Taffer's going to go in there and KO him. And I think it will be in round two. Now we get to the exciting fight, Jack Della Maddalena versus Randy Brown. A lot of people are going with Jack Della Maddalena and I'm going to go with him as well. Randy Brown has got the build to do this. He has, he's got that long reach, he's very tall, six foot three, but the problem is Jack Della Maddalena knows how to fight like a boxer. He could transition into boxing if he wanted to. He can get low in the pocket, evade that jab of his, come to the body and use that body shot to set up like a right hook. So. A left hook to the body, followed up by a right hook to Randy Brown's head. And because he's going to have the long reach, Randy Brown is going to have to try and take him down. But knowing Jack Madalena's takedown defense, I think even if he gets him down once, he'll get back up to his feet. And you might say, no, it won't happen because Randy Brown's good on the ground. I think Jack Madalena has shown that he can deal with grapplers. Look at Ramzan Amiv. He took him down to the ground. He was able to get up. He's a strong grappler from Russia. I think it will end up in a KO for Jack Madalena because most of the time when Randy Brown loses, it's by a KO. And think about that, Vincente Luque KO. Jack madalena has got more power than both of them. He's a better striker than both of them. And I do think in this type of fight, it only makes sense for him to actually knock him out cold. Because Randy Brown, he has a boxing background. He's more of jiu-jitsu, but he can box. I think he might have had an amateur fight or something back in the day. But... It looks like he tries to use his boxing more than he does his grappling. But I think if he's smart against Jack Madalena, he will go to the ground. Because he knows how good of a grappler he is. But he has the build and advantage over him. So if he somehow wins this fight, you've got to give him credit. But I don't think he will. Because Jack Della Madalena's counter-strike is very good. He's fluid. He gives me vibes of like a Calvin Qatar type of fighter. Like calculated with his strikes. Not coming in there, dipping his head low, swinging hooks. Like holding that high guard up, stepping into the pocket, bobbing and weaving his way into range, and then working the body and coming up to the head. Like what boxers will teach you, not just head hunting the whole fight, which is what Randy Brown will probably do, trying to just pop up that jab and use like lateral movement. But it won't work because Jack Madalena, even if he tries to use lateral movement, Jack Madalena is good at switching stance. He'll move from different angles and then catch you with a right hook or a left hook. I just don't see how Randy Brown can win it on the feet. If he goes to the ground, there is a chance he could do it. But knowing Jack Madalena's takedown defense rate, I think he should be able to get the job done. Should. But you never know. Yair Rodriguez versus Josh Emmett. I'm picking Yair to win this fight. Emmett's on the older side now. He's got power, but remember, Yair's younger. He's going to be faster on the feet. I think he's going to be able to outpoint strike him. It's going to be five rounds as well. And you might say that's going to benefit Josh Emmett because in his career, he has done more rounds than Yair Rodriguez has. And you might say if you go back to that Max Holloway fight, in the earlier rounds, Yair was doing well. But as soon as Max Holloway mixed up the takedowns, it took away his cardio 
and it made him do worse. Against Josh Emmett, he's a defensive wrestler. He's not offensive with his grappling, which is why I don't think he has to worry about that. But look at that Calvin Katar fight. He was keeping it on the feet. He should have lost that fight, by the way. But he tries to strike with him toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And against Jair, I think his fight IQ is too high for someone like Josh Emmett to compete. His age isn't going to go well with it. Emmett's got the age disadvantage, the striking disadvantage. The only advantage I'll say he might have over Yair is cardio. And I don't want to say he's got a bad chin because he only got cared once and it was against Jeremy Stevens, who calls himself the hardest hitting 145 pounder. And Yair's going to have the reach advantage as well. So you never know, Yair might even start mixing up a few more kicks in this fight. Like we've seen him do like bicycle kicks. He's very creative with his punches. He uses elbows, like that Chan Sung Young elbow, for example, dipping down low doing like that upwards elbow. Josh Emmett likes to get very explosive when he comes into the pocket throwing like hooks there. And if he does that, I can see him getting cut like he did against Qatar. But against Jair, I think he might cut him with an elbow. And let's just say, worst case scenario, Josh Emmett actually does decide to take him down to the ground. Jair has got some level of jujitsu. Look what he did to Brian Ortega. Yeah, he didn't make him tap with an armbar, but he damaged his shoulder with it. His armbar position is what caused it to happen. So you have to give him a bit of credit for that. So I think even if it goes to the ground, Josh Emmett doesn't really show off jujitsu or anything. Yair has more submissions than Josh Emmett. And although Josh Emmett has had more fights than Yair Rodriguez, I believe Yair Rodriguez has better experience against the more advanced fighters. Like you look at Josh Emmett's record, he beat Calvin Qatar. No, he shouldn't have won that fight. Danny Ige, yeah, he beat him. Shane Burgos, Marissa Bekitic. Michael Johnson, they're okay wins, but they're not like Yair's fights, who's headlined multiple cards beating people like Brian Ortega now, Jeremy Stevens, Chan Sung Young, BJ Penn, okay, he was finished at that point, Alex Caceres, Andre Philly, Dan Hooker, Charles Rosa, loads and loads of fighters, and he's headlined a lot, he's built up that experience, he knows what it's like when he gets to the pressure situations now. But I've got a feeling Josh Emmett might get carried against Yair when he's trying to be explosive in the pocket because Yair's fight IQ will outdo him and he'll catch him on the chin with like a knee or an elbow that will cut him and drop him down to the ground. Right, the main event. Alexander Volkanovsky versus Islam Makashev. Everybody is picking Islam Makashev, but I've got a weird feeling Alexander Volkanovsky is going to win this fight. And I think he might do it by TKO. Like, think back to that Adriano Martins fight. I know it was years back, and he's a different fighter now. He's much better at boxing. I think we might see a similar situation to that. Like, Alexander Volkanovsky comes out fast and tries to catch him with the overhand right. And if you watch back that fight with Alexander Volkanovsky against Jamie Malarkey, I know it's a random fight. I think it will be like that KO. Like, he counter strikes Makashev as he tries to come in with a strike and then drops him down to the ground. But I understand why you're picking Makashev. It's the logical person. He's bigger than Alexander Volkanovsky. He's got a tight grip on his submissions. Volkanovsky has got a tendency to get caught in them. Like, you think about that Brian Ortega fight. Very explosive in the pocket. Loses his balance. Drops down to the ground. And then he pulls the guillotine. Yeah, if Makashev pulls that guillotine on Alexander Volkanovsky, he will win that fight. And if he somehow drops Volkanovski, where there's a chance that could happen because Volkanovski's smaller than him and Makashev's going to be bigger than him. And Makashev is developing power now, like knocking down Charles Oliveira. I know you might say he might not have the best chin, but no one expected Makashev to knock him down. No one did. If he locks in an arm triangle like he did to Oliveira, again, Volkanovski will not power his way out of it. Even a guillotine, I don't even think Volkanovski will get out of it. Because remember, and I know it was years back, but when you look at Alexander Volkanovsky's record, remember, he got KO'd when he was at a heavier weight class. So there is a possibility of a KO by Makashev. If I'm honest with you, I don't think it will be a KO. I think if Volkanovsky is going to lose the fight, I think it will be by a submission. Whereas if Volkanovsky is going to win the fight, I think he can win by a KO or a decision. I don't think Makashev will beat him by a decision. Because Volkanovsky is good at like managing the range, like throwing that leg kick, then getting into the pocket, being explosive, throwing some like uppercuts, hooks, but then he does have a tendency to lose his balance. That is probably the main factor that I'm worried about is Volkanovski's balance. Like he throws a wild hook, Makashev like shuffles his leg out the way and he ends up on the floor and then Makashev can like pounce on top of him and get control. That's the worst case scenario. But if he's able to do what he did against Max Holloway by keeping it at range, 
timing the counters into the pocket because I don't think Volkanovski is going to lose power. He might lose a little bit of that speed that he's got, but despite that, I think he's going to be faster than Makashev. So you're probably thinking after all those points I've mentioned, Islam Makashev should win the fight. No, I've got a weird feeling Volkanovski is going to get it done and surprise everyone. Just like Jamal Hill surprised everyone and kind of like how Strickland surprised a lot of people this year. And it's like Volkanovski is getting better each fight. I know it was at lightweight, but look at that Max Holloway fight. That's the most dominant performance we've seen from Volkanovski against Max Holloway. 50-45. And I know there was no grappling involved, but against Makashev, he has got good takedown defense. But then we have to worry about, is Makashev going to be too strong for him? Maybe. But I think if he can stop the takedowns, and you probably agree as well, if he can stop the takedowns and he can keep it on the feet, he'll win the fight. But I'm worried he's going to throw a wild hook. He's going to get caught off balance. He might give away his back. He might fall to the ground and then Makashev will pounce on top of him and finish him. But I've got a weird feeling I think Volkanovski is going to win this fight via KO. So yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching. Talk to you soon.